After a nice 2-0 start, the Pelicans come back down to earth in their loss to the Golden State Warriors, but it wasn't the refs that caused the Pelicans to spiral in the third quarter. It was what they were missing, and I'll explain in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Coming to y'all on Wednesday after the Pelicans lose in pretty embarrassing fashion to the Golden State Warriors, 130-102, a 28-point loss, which, yeah, that about sums up how that game went after a close first half. The Pelicans really let things get away. They kind of spiraled in the third quarter. The refs weren't good, but there were other things going on there that I want to break down because you could kind of see this coming the way this game played out and I'll explain what I mean coming up in today's show today's episode by the way of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel make every moment more right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and of course thank you for making Locked on Pelicans your first listen today and every day we are here Monday through Friday coming to y'all like nobody else is the number one Pelicans podcast breaking down everything you want to know about the team. We've got some serious insight for you in today's show about this loss and the rebounding, which I want to touch on too. And yeah, we'll scream a little bit about Bally Sports too, because that was pretty awful. You can, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let's get into the game though. That's what we're here to really talk about. When I watched that first half, you could kind of see this coming. The Pelicans were kept in that game because of their three-point shooting throughout the first two quarters and they hit two threes right like towards the end of the first half they were down eight they hit two threes and it pulled them within two and I think it made the score look closer than I felt that game actually was look it was a good job that the Pelicans hit those threes and it's been good that they're shooting a lot more threes you don't want to get into a three-point shootout with the Golden State Warriors though the offense did overall look clunky to me in the first half. This was just one of those games where everyone was kind of out of sorts when it comes to everything. I'm doing this in a hotel room, so I'm just checking to make sure the audio and everything looks good if you're watching on YouTube and I lean over like that. So you could kind of see this coming, I think. So let's let's start with the top of the third quarter here. The refs weren't good. The refs were just flat out bad and atrocious, to be perfectly honest with y'all. Let's get this out of the way here. You know, they missed that obvious offensive foul on Steph. That probably should have been a tech on Steph, in all honesty. There was a, then the tech on Willie Green. Then you had that Herb Jones foul where he got teed up, even though his reaction wasn't very, like, demonstrative. Two of the nicest people in the league, and Herb Jones and Willie Green, getting texts from refs. And Willie deserved that one and probably should have picked up that one. That was a good technical foul for him to get. Then Zion ends up in foul trouble, and they need to pull him out. And it throws the Pelicans off. It absolutely does. There's no other way around it, right? They weren't allowed to play defense like they wanted to. They weren't getting calls on the offensive end. It throws you out of your rhythm. But you know what happened? Their effort died. Their effort just immediately went away. And yes, even if the refs are kind of screwing you over, and I think it's safe to say they did in this game, you still control your effort. And the Pelicans didn't do a good job of that. They really seemed to lose their composure. And I don't know if it was also, you know, the the late scratch of Brandon Ingram and knee soreness not playing in this game, which kind of came out of nowhere. But everything just seemed out of sync, out of rhythm overall. And while the first half was close, I told you, it should have been an eight-point deficit in theory. You know, they were hitting three-pointers. And if that were to dry up and it went away in the second half... This game is going to look a whole lot different, and well, it did. And that's a big reason why they lost it. There was just no consistency there. In the first half of this game, the Pelicans shot 8 of 22, 36.4%. It's very good from three. The second half, they were 2 of 17, 11.8%. 
That's not going to get it done. You know, in the second half, particularly in that third quarter when Zion wasn't in there, they were just chugging up threes. I don't have a huge problem with that. We want them taking more threes, but that's not necessarily something you're always going to be able to rely on. In the third quarter alone, they shot one of ten. The only person to make one was Dyson Daniels. Herb Jones took one. Zion took one that he completely airballed. Hawkins went 0 for 2. McCollum 0 for 2. Dyson was 1 of 2. Matt Ryan 0 for 2. It was just a bad shooting period for the Pelicans in this game, in that quarter, and there was just no semblance of the offense, no getting the ball inside, no trying to go through Jonas or anything like that. You know, CJ really tried to do what he could. He picked up two and ones on layups, but there's also only so much that he's capable of doing. You know, and I've said in previous shows, if you're an everydayer, right, I do worry that the three-point shooting wouldn't be sustainable for the Pelicans, and it wasn't in this game, and this is a game where they really missed Brandon Ingram. Sometimes you just need a dude that can get you a bucket that hits, you know, has shot-making in him. You know, We can complain, and a lot of people do complain about Brandon Ingram, and I think some of that's valid. You know, I'd prefer him to refine his shot selection. I've said this on the show a couple of times now. You know, you'd like him to take more threes, fewer long, tough, contested mid-rangers. But you know what? I would have taken those mid-rangers if he was hitting them in this game, and they really lacked that. There was just no shot creation outside of kind of chucking up three-pointers in here. And I don't know what was just really going on, right? CJ didn't shoot well in this one. Matt Ryan didn't shoot well in this one. You know, you need more semblance of the offense that you truly want. Matt Ryan was okay, actually, in terms of three-point shooting, but CJ was two of eight. Jordan Hawkins was two of seven. Valanciunas, one of five. Herb, 0 for four. Wasn't a great shooting night. And some of this gets alleviated, right? Some of this is going to get alleviated with... Trey Murphy coming back. You know, he's going to step in. He'll help you with defense. He'll help you with rebounding, which we'll touch on in the next segment here because that was a real big deal in this one. And Matt Ryan's likely going to lose the minutes as he struggles defensively. And then you also have Jordan Hawkins, who started this game in place of B.I. And I think that means he's earned Willie Green's trust, right? So I would assume that when Trey Murphy comes back, some of those minutes he'll keep. But I think it'll be Matt Ryan kind of losing out We'll talk more about Jordan Hawkins in the third segment of today's show as we talk about Bally's then, too. We can do that. So, you know, they needed to have more semblance of their offense. Find ways to get Zion open. You basically saw the Golden State Warriors walling off the paint, just throwing bodies down there to prevent Zion and saying, okay, make us pay. Make us pay with your three-point shooters. And it didn't really work in this game. Worked in the first half. They kept it close. And then in the third quarter, when they stopped hitting their shots, this is how it goes. That's why they need to work on that, you know, the James Borrego offense, Zion off ball, find ways to get him open. They didn't use him on ball probably as much as they could have either. He was looking good. He was hitting his shots. He looks good this year, but there's too many possessions. And you saw it in the third quarter where he doesn't get the ball, where he doesn't touch the ball in a game where you don't have B.I. What are we doing here? Get the ball to Zion. Worst case is, you know, he misses. That's going to be the same as if you miss a three-pointer then, but I'd rather have Zion be the one taking the shot. So the refs kind of messing with the Pels, you know, no B.I., the offense still being a work in progress and looking clunky. It just led to a just collapse, disaster, loss of composure. You could use whatever phrase word you want with it. There's no sugarcoating it. I don't really think this was only the refs. I think it was just everything else. Whether that means this is a game that you just don't even watch the film on, chuck it in the trash can, and that's that or not, I don't know. But that's clearly not going to work at all for what they did, and that's why they ended up with almost a 30-point loss in this game. Another reason was rebounding, but that's been a bit of a problem all season long. Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans, because... There are some answers to that, but also not answers to that, too. And that's something that could be a bigger concern long term for the New Orleans Pelicans. So I want to look at that because I do think this is important. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about FanDuel because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So score early this NFL season, early this NBA season with FanDuel because right now new customers get a 150 uh, get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. 
Bet the Pals on the money line to win outright against the Oklahoma City Thunder on Wednesday or on Thursday when they're back home against the Pistons, who lost the other night. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. $5 bet on the Pels to win, they win, you get $150 in bonus bets. The app's super easy to use. There's a wide variety of other betting options as well. You got the spreads, you got the player props, the over-unders. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season, tip off the NBA season. FanDuel official partner of the NFL and the official sportsbook of Locked On. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team, the number one Pelicans podcast. If you want to support the channel, become an everydayer. Listen Monday through Friday. Throw it on your car and your commute to work when you're at the gym, whenever you got a couple of minutes. It's not like it's a long show. We're under 30 minutes every single day. No one else comes to y'all like this. So become an everydayer. Listen Monday through Friday. Or if you only listen once a week, listen twice a week. You'll get more. This is a fun team. They're going to be exciting this year. You know, it's one game. They'll move on from this and they'll improve. I, I truly believe that. And if you really want to support the show, we've got the Locked On Pelicans Insiders group where you can text me. I'll text you back. It's really cool. I'll share some inside info in there. I'm really thinking about dropping a picture in there that I have of something. We'll see. We'll see. But you want to get in there before I do that so you don't miss out. So the link is in the description down below. It's $4.99 a month. If you don't like it, it's okay, just cancel it. You also get 14 days free. So let's get back to the Pelicans and their 130-102 loss, I think it was, to the Golden State Warriors. Just an ugly game. Just an ugly game that got away from them in the third quarter. And sometimes that's just how it goes. They lost that quarter 39-21. to An 18-point beatdown in that quarter. An area that the Pelicans also struggled with that you just cannot do cannot do against the Golden State Warriors is poor defensive rebounding, giving up too many offensive rebounds and thus second chance points to the Golden State Warriors. The Pelicans lost the rebounding battle in this one, 64 to 39. Hold on there for a second though, because looking at those numbers by themselves don't tell the whole story. When people are like, here's where they, you can, you can be fine while losing the rebounding battle. It depends on how and where and some of the nuance to it, which is why you tune into shows like Locked on Pelicans. 21 offensive boards, though, for the Golden State Warriors, for a team that's not a great offensive rebounding team. That's a problem. That's particularly a problem against them. That allowed them to get 25 second chance points. 25 second chance points. That's a terrible number. Against a very good three-point shooting team. Steph Curry hit 42 in this, right? He went 7 of 13. How many second-chance opportunities? Well, they, we, we can tell you they got 21 second-chance opportunities. Do you give a good three-point shooting team like that? A team with offensive weapons, even when Clay Thompson's not playing, right? Uh, Chris Paul was like clinical at times in this one. Steph Curry was fantastic. When they miss, you got to make sure they don't get an opportunity to get a putback or two more points because they can score. That's just gifting them easy points in a game that you could win otherwise. They're too good offensively to do that. And the Pelicans were just wrecked on the glass in this game. And that's been a problem this season. They have not done a good job rebounding. And I have the numbers behind it here. They're actually, as of now, the second worst defensive rebounding team. They grab a defensive rebound just 66.7% of the time. That's not good. That's like really a really bad number. And that is getting them in trouble. So they're the second worst defensive rebounding team. What was their number last year? I can pull this up and I'll find out for you. They grabbed a defensive rebound 77.4% of the time. So what is that? Is that 10%? It's a 10% difference. Almost a 10% difference. 66.7% of the time this year. So about out of, they're giving up one out of every three rebounds is an offensive board. So they're only grabbing two out of three. That's not good. You want that to be closer to three out of four. That leads to... Opponents getting a ton of second chance points against them. They actually lead the league, so they're the worst team when it comes to opponents' second chance points. 22.3 per game. You lost this game by 28. If you limit that somewhat, is this game different? It absolutely is. It absolutely is. The other part of it is the Pelicans are only getting 14.3 second chance points for themselves. It's a difference of six right there. 
per game that you're just more or less going in with the disadvantage of in that area. And the Pelicans are actually doing a good job of getting second chance points. They're 12th in the league. The top team in the league is the Utah Jazz at 20.5. Again, the Pelicans give up 22.3 second chance points per game. And this is hurting them in a variety of areas. It's going to make it look like the rim protection is bad. When it's not, they actually do a very good job of limiting opponents into the paint, I think, outside of this. They're 19th when it comes to opponent points in the paint, 51.5. 51, sorry, 51.3. Take away, say, like 18 of that. That puts them in an elite number in terms of limiting opponent points in the paint. They're probably number one when you take out second chance points and things like that. It's not an exact math. I could probably figure it out, but that's pretty good, isn't it? They're doing a really good job defensively other than this one area. Everything else is good, but they've got to terminate those possessions. Defensive rebounding counts as defense. And this is an issue for them. You know, part of it is they like to close small with Larry Nance Jr. Because they don't like to close the game with Jonas Valanciunas. And he was getting worked on the boards in this one. You know, there was Dario Saric grabbing offensive rebounds over him. That can't happen. That cannot happen in this game. Dario Saric had six offensive boards. No, four. Sorry, four. You had uh, Trace... Jackson Davis grabbing seven. He's a rookie. What are we doing here, right? Looney with two. Moses Moody with two. Gary Payton the second, a guard with two. You can't give up that many offensive boards and let them just get other opportunities to score. And that's what the Pelicans did. They've lost the rebounding battle in all of these games. The Knicks grabbed a bunch of offensive boards, particularly Mitchell Robinson. It didn't matter in that game because they couldn't shoot at all, and the Pelicans played good defense on the perimeter. But here it led to them just scrambling. It was a huge problem for this team. Nothing was good about this. And it's a big part of the reason why they lost. You know, that third quarter we just talked about the bad offense, the defense wasn't great because it was giving up offensive rebounds. You've got to cut that out and eliminate that so that your team can stay in these games because you just don't need to be gifting opponents those things. This is why we talked a lot about them looking for another center, a center that they could close with, that they could play in, in key minutes. That's not Jonas Valanciunas because when they go small with Larry Nance Jr., who is a small ball five, they run into this problem. It reared its head in the play-in tournament. It happened in that Minnesota game right at the end of last season two that affected their playoff seating where they were up like 15 or 20. I was at the watch party with the Pels 12 in Mid-City, and all of a sudden Minnesota goes on a run because they're pounding New Orleans on the glass. Getting those offensive boards, getting those second chance points, this is something they need to figure out. There's one area they can work on trying to fix this with. One thing you'll notice is when an opponent misses, like they are sprinting down the court. They're not team rebounding. They're not gang rebounding. They are trying to get out on transition and run, and they want to play fast. If you play fast, it means you're probably not going as a team for those defensive rebounds. You need to maybe do a little bit more of that. New Orleans had 22 fast break points compared to just six for the Golden State Warriors. That number is really good because they're getting out and running. They're doing it off of misses. But it does you no good if you, don't, if you can't run and score because you actually don't have the ball. And that's what happened in this game. They maybe need to revisit that a little bit and to try and tone that back some so that they can be a little bit stouter on the defensive glass. And I think you'll see that be a difference for them in the game on Wednesday against the Oklahoma City Thunder and then in the back-to-back -back against the Pistons on Thursday. Or at least it should be because this is a big reason why they lost this game. How it goes sometimes, but you got to learn early in the season. No brand Ingram and all the stuff we talked about in the first segment certainly played a factor as well. So coming up next, hey, Bally Sports, what you doing there? That's not great. We'll look at some of the other individual performances as well. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about game time because buying tickets can be difficult. You know, are your seats good? Is the price going to change? Is, should you buy them right now? Should you wait till the day of? Should you wait till the last minute? When you do that. You know, you want to make sure that you're getting the best price. It can lead to indecision. Now, the tickets aren't there. It's just not a fun process overall. But you know what? Game time 
is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You get to see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know where you're going to be sitting, what it's going to look like. All of your prices are shown up front, so you know you're getting a real deal without any hidden fees. And they have the game time guarantee, which means you'll always get the best price. Because if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. It gives you that peace of mind. So take guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, whether you're trying to go to a Saints game, whether you're trying to go to a Pels game. Concerts, comedy, they have literally everything. You get to download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NBA, L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday. Coming to you like no one else is, the number one Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Become an everyday and support the show. Become a Locked On Pelicans insider as well. For your second listen today, go check out Locked On. No, tomorrow your second listen is Locked On NBA. Today, your second listen is Locked On Saints. Ross Jackson breaking down everything black and gold. I'll plug Locked On NBA tomorrow because I'll be on it then. So look pretty easy for you to watch this show, right? It's on YouTube. You can listen to it. If you prefer the podcast form, we're always there. We don't have any real outages every now and then. You know, one minor thing comes up and I miss a show. But in general, it works. You know what didn't work this game? Bally Sports. So if you weren't in the arena and you were in New Orleans, you couldn't really watch the game. This is... I don't want to spend this much time on it. Like, I don't. I know you all hate Bally's. I don't particularly love it. And I will say, I'm probably give them a bit more of a benefit of the doubt than like anybody else does. I don't crush them as much as I know y'all would like me to. But what happened for this game is absolutely unacceptable. I was on a plane. I'm in Los Angeles right now. I was on a plane. 30,000 plus feet in the air. And I watched the game on the plane. Made some new friends on the plane as people were watching with me. That was pretty cool. I was able to watch the game on an airplane flying and you in New Orleans might not have been able to watch the game. There is something so fundamentally flawed about that, and it angers me, and I know it angers you as well. This is not great. Bally's is also going through a ton of stuff, and again, don't expect anything to change right away with it, but at the bare minimum, you got to make sure the games are available. It's as simple as that. The Pelicans and I'm sure they are, and I haven't talked to anyone with the team yet about this, are furious about this. I have no doubt they are furious about this. They picked Bally Sports over other options that they could have had. And they chose to stick with Bally Sports. There's an entire show on that if you wanted, a couple of shows on it, actually. But this makes that decision look real dumb. And they have their reasons for it. But this is just so... How are you supposed to build a fan base when people can't watch the games? Look... You can watch them for 20 bucks a month. That's okay. You can build that. But not when the $20 you know, that you're paying a month doesn't actually get you the game because of technical issues, because frankly, they're being cheap because they're going through bankruptcy. It's a thing. They're, they're cutting things. You'll see it on the broadcasts and stuff too. You'll notice subtle little changes with stuff because I've talked to the people around it and that's what's happening. And that's not ideal. It creates just a bad experience for you, the fan. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be easy to watch your team, especially if you're already paying for it. We don't need to get into the finer debate about whether it should be free on over the air or things like that. There's significant issues with that and hurdles and challenges. But look, they have an app. The app shouldn't go down, and that needs to have been fixed. And Bally's absolutely needs to do something to make it right, whether it's a free month or whatever. Because... You pay for this, you expect it to work. Like That's just un not good. The Pelicans need to be involved and put a little bit more pressure on Bally's. I'm sure they're going to. I guarantee you they are furious about this. But in a season that's so critical for the team, in a season where you are you know, trying to kind of still build and get over last year, which was disappointing, to have this happen, I, yeah, you know, yell, scream, tag them and things. Be mad. Like, I, I get it. I think it's valid. That's not good. They've got to be better than that. You know, it's just as simple as that. I don't want to dwell on it too much because, look, 
What else is there to say other than this is dumb and this shouldn't be happening? And this is being able to watch the games is like the bare minimum, right? Like that's what you're here. Their job is, and they failed that, and that means they failed you, and that means that the Pelicans who chose this group to go with over others were doing it themselves. Which again, I've reported they looked at. I mean, it's just a bit of a slap in the face overall, if even indirectly. And so I don't love that this happened. It shouldn't be me on a plane being able to watch it very easily compared to y'all in New Orleans. Doesn't really impact you if you were watching it outside of the market, but still. All right, couple couple of just quick notes here before we wrap up the show. I liked what we saw from Jordan Hawkins in this game. Getting the start, playing 35 minutes in there, 6 of 13 from the field, 2 of 7. He did well on, on rebounding. He plays bigger than he is. That's, that's jumped out at me in summer league. That's jumped out at me throughout his first couple of games of his pro career here. Five rebounds is pretty good. Two assists, two steals active. He's not a good defender, but he's not a bad defender, I guess. And, you know, I thought he was much better than Matt Ryan, you know, and more active on the glass and in those sorts of things. He plays bigger than he is. Just some very impressive minutes for the rookie, you know, who's dealing with a bit of a learning curve, trying to find a shot. That was pretty good. Herb Jones struggled in this one. I think the foul trouble got in his head a little bit. One of five from the field over four. They got to find ways to just get him some easy points because they need him scoring. That's not going to work. Kaiser Gates coming in, who we haven't seen yet. Immediately, I liked playing him over Kyra Lewis Jr. Didn't work. That's okay. You tried. Kyra did play four of six from the field, showed off the speed, getting downhill, got to the free throw line a bunch. If he can do that, that's a useful player that he won't need to worry about Darion Sebron getting minutes from him or anything like that. So that, was, that wasn't that was bad. That was really it. This game was kind of terrible. Zion looked good when Zion was playing 19 points on 15 shots. Didn't shoot the ball well from the free throw line, 5 of 9. Um, three assists, though, two steals. He's been looking good defensively. Just super, just lightning fast, y'all. But this was a disappointing game. Maybe it was the refs. Maybe it was everything else. The team's still a bit of a work in progress, but at least they're 2-1 and one and beats the alternative than that. You got an opportunity to get a win on Wednesday against a tough OKC team, then home against the Detroit Pistons Thursday. I'm hopefully going to be able to make it to the game, going from the airport straight to there. Then the Hawks on Saturday, I think, is the next one. It's going to be a fun season. Look, they're, that, that, at least they figured this game out, I guess. You know, diagnosing what went wrong there isn't too hard. We'll get an update on Brandon Ingram. Hopefully have that for you all tomorrow as well. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with you all tomorrow. <laughs>